The origin of this object could not be traced for centuries. It is a unique artifact that miraculously survived the flames of a fire. The National Art Museum of Ukraine has been renamed many times over the course of the country's turbulent history. Every renaming didn't only change the sign, but the whole collection concept. Moreover, every renaming essentially implies the creation of a new museum. The icon called Scenes from the Life of St. George is made of carved wooden planks with an overlaying polychrome image. The icon retells the entire curriculum video of St. George, a highly venerated figure in most major Christian confessions. Scenes from the Life of St. George. He's a very popular saint in many countries. Here you can see his image. He's clothed as a Roman warrior with the shield and spear. He's surrounded by ten border scenes, which tell us about his merited drone he suffered at the hands of Roman Emperor Deolitan, who was George's military commander. St. George had lived in the 3rd century AD. He was martyred somewhere around 303-305. Since from the life of St. George is one of the most ancient Christian Orthodox icon in Ukraine, it is dated to the 12th century and it is a work of the Byzantine school of iconography. We can see that this is a Byzantine icon in his, his bearing, which is that of a classical hero. The curls on his head are orderly. The ornament dividing the brand and ornament of a twist and a barb is characteristic for Byzantine iconography. Polychromy, multicolored, there were more blue and red colors earlier. But this icon has survived over times exactly in this form and condition. The unknown artist was a professional, a great craftsman. He didn't only convey the religious story, which consists of only five scenes. The iconographer actually not only depicted the whole life of St. George, but also managed to convey the inner quintessence, harmony and serenity of his life. How did this icon end up in Ukraine? What has it survived? What miracles are associated with this bas relief? For more than 50 years, the icon from the National Art Museum sparked with great interest among both local and foreign scholars. The chaired wooden word marked icon is still a formidable art object which can effectively rival other word objects of art. This icon has an interesting legend. It tells about 9th century Greeks who were hit by a storm near Balaklava, Crimea. They started praying and after that St. George appeared before them. The legend has it that God sent St. George who appeared in George's rock or the rock of holy appearance on the Crimean coast. The rock has a cross where the legend reads St. George has appeared. When the storm subsided, the Greeks made it to the shore and found it a cave monastery dedicated to the saint. This is only a legend, though. There is a scholarly hypothesis that the icon was brought here from Turkey by a metropolitan Ignatius who placed the image in the St. George Cathedral. The icon would have stayed in Crimea if not the Russian Empress Catherine II in 778. Catherine, whose hands were still red with blood of Zaporizhian Cossacks, sent her henchmen to commit yet another atrocity. 
I propose relocating the Greeks from Crimea to Ukraine. That is a good idea. Do you think they will agree to leave? Let's tell them that we want to protect them from the Muslim yoke. Good. We will also get people to popular our special dessert. Wonderful, Your Highness. Off to you. This time she ordered all Crimean Christians to be relocated. This was later called the liberation of the faithful from the Mahometan yoke. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? Traveling from Crimea, it is known that even the strong Greek youth carried the icon all the way through Crimea to the Azov Sea coast, where they founded the city of Mariupol. Thus, the icon has gone all the way from the St. George Cathedral in Crimea to Mariupol. Here, the icon was placed in the main church of the newly founded city, the St. Carolampius Cathedral, where it was dressed in a silver risa. The image has great historical value and attracts the attention of both local and foreign scholars. Art historians and different scholars of the 19th century wrote about this icon. Even scholars who have seen only photographs of the image discussed it. Prominent Russian archaeologist Alexander Berdier, de la Garde, and numerous art historians took interest in the icon and wrote about it. Almost a century after its exile, the St. George icon returned home. Not for long, though. In 1891, the icon was brought to Sevastopol alongside a number of other sacral paraphernalia for the celebration of the millennium of Christianity in Crimea and the anniversary of the St. George Cathedral. When the celebration came to an end, the icon was returned back to Mariupol. The church was burned down, which is why we can see burn marks on the icon. Then the October Revolution happened. What happened to these icons? They were either destroyed or ended up in museums. All the other relics of St. Carlemus Cathedral were destroyed together with relics from numerous other temples deemed redundant by the Bolsheviks. The icon came to the rest in the Mariupol Local History Museum, where its trail was lost. In 1965, Kyiv art historians Lada Malayeva and Rihori Logvin traveled to Mariupol. Their goal was to find and study the unique icon of St. George. When they arrived at the museum, they weren't able to find any registry entries about the icon. They had already accepted defeat, but accidentally visited a small storeroom on their way out. The janitors stored their equipment there, brooms, mops and buckets. The scholars were astonished to find that the floorboards of the small storeroom were actually a unique relic from the 12th century. Shining torch here. <gasps> What's there? Impossible. This is just you can imagine. This is the find of the century. God, how lucky. Incredible. 
Can you imagine their joy? They took it to Kyiv from there. In Kyiv, it was decided that the icon must be taken to Leningrad, where it was subjected to art conservator Nikolai Pertsev, work which took a whole five years to finish. The icon was cleaned and reinforced, and many fragments were put there where they had broken off. In 1970s, scenes from the life of St. George was moved to the National Art Museum of Ukraine, where the Byzantine icon begins its new life. Famous art historians started to study the icon already during the conservation works, many prominent Russian scholars being among them. The icon remains a unique historical relic and an object of art. It is one of the most ancient icons in Ukraine and is an illustrious example of uncommon iconography and technique, which is rare not only in Ukraine, but in the whole world. The Byzantine Museum in Athens has an icon in the same type, which also depicts the scenes from the St. George's life. But the Athenian icon is extremely polychromic, has very bright colors, and the brands of the icon are not carved, but painted. So the Ukrainian icon is different from the Greek one, in that it is carved. The uniqueness of the Ukrainian icon lies in the fact that it managed to survive till our times. This is Byzantine, Greek art, which has made it through the ages. It was damaged and destroyed, but the spirit of Byzantine art has survived through its thousands of years and it is still there. This is a wonderful relief because we can feel the inner strength of the artist, the craftsman who created the icon. In 1997, our icon flew across the ocean to the American Metropolitan Museum to participate in the exhibition Glory of Byzantinium. And the icon was made in the Byzantine Empire. Can you imagine the attention it drew from the visitors? The National Art Museum of Ukraine icon attracts the attention of both ordinary museum goers and that of various collectors. The icon is estimated to be worth $2 million. And this is only the initial price. If the icon would be an auction lot, the final price could exceed the estimate by 10 times. I don't like to talk about the price of sacral art because it is priceless. It inherited a village house, has a wonderful icon, and no one would know how much it costs. For me, spiritual culture is most important, not the material culture. Even today, the mystery of the icon's origin remains unsolved. Some scholars suggest that it was made not in Byzantine Empire, modern day Turkey, but in the ancient city of Kersenassus near Sevastopol, where the Kiev Prince Vladimir the Great was baptized. A hypothesis exists starting that the icon was made in Kiev by a Byzantine craftsman who came there with Vladimir on the way back from Kersenassus. <laughs>